Fixer Upper and Game of Thrones under the same umbrella company? That's right. AT&T and Discovery announced a media merger, or they're creating a new company that will focus just on content and streaming, where AT&T will still kind of have their telecom, and now this other company being formed will be just focused on content. Which is kind of funny because AT&T bought Warner Media years ago for a mega deal, right? They took out debt to buy this company to form both distribution and content under one company, AT&T. Now they're taking that media asset and creating a new company. <laughs> it's just the management can't decide what they wanna do. Anyway, in this video, we're gonna be talking about my opinion on the whole deal of what we know right now, and then my thoughts on the deal, what I like, and then what I don't like, plus my game plan for AT&T. Initially, the news caused a spike in AT&T on Monday, but then after some time, the stock started to fall down and then really pick up speed. And then as of today, Tuesday, it came down 7% this morning, which is a pretty big move for a company like AT&T because the beta on the stock is pretty low. News on the street is that AT&T would cut their dividend payout in order to right-size the company. Essentially, they're trying to not overpay in dividends and free up some cash to pay down debt and really just become more about reinvesting in the company versus just extracting cash out of the business. So the plan was to reduce a 63% payout ratio to around 40 or 43%. So on a $20 billion payout in terms of free cash flow, we're talking about around $8 billion in dividends. If you look at the cash flow statement for 2020, they paid out dividends of around $15 billion for their common stock dividend payout. So if you do the math on that, that's around a 47% cut related to the dividend if those numbers held true. So while it's exciting for the company to divest and create a new company and you get shares in that new company as an AT&T shareholder, they also kind of hid the fact that they're going to be pulling back on the dividends a bit and people that invested in AT&T, a big portion of those people are looking for income. So it's kind of a slap in the face to the old AT&T shareholders because a lot of those investors are looking for cash flow via dividends and AT&T was one of those companies that had a higher dividend payout. Let's talk about what we do know. AT&T is merging to create a new company with Discovery, as we talked about for a $43 billion deal worth of cash, debt securities, and then they'll retain some of Warner Media's debt. at and shareholders, so if you own one share, you'll be getting around 71% of the new company. So we don't have any details on the amount of shares of the new company, what it's worth, all that good stuff, but as an at and shareholder, you would be receiving new shares in the new company, which is, I mean, obviously good to know. The combined company is expected to have 52 billion in revenue in 2023, and then also there's supposed to be around $3 billion in cost savings. AT&T, meanwhile, will focus its efforts on 5G and fiber broadband. If you watch my video on Verizon, this just goes to show that telecom and AT&T is realizing, okay, they have to put a ton of money into 5G and forward tech. And so they're leaning up the company a little bit on the telecom side to be able to focus on 5G. The other thing is this deal is supposed to close in 2022. You still got time before it actually gets approval and the new company wouldn't be created until 2022. Granted, we don't have super detailed information about the whole deal, but from a high level, I can talk about exactly what I like about the deal as well as what I don't like. One thing I like is that the new company will now have a wider range of intellectual property. So it'll have more content to compete with the likes of Netflix and Disney. With the addition of Discovery, now you have HGTV, Food Network, uh, Animal Planet, all these other shows that HBO and Warner Media didn't have before. Now you're combining Discovery Plus with HBO Max, which at the end of the day, once you bundle this, it just becomes more appealing to customers. Clearly, AT&T is also trying to reduce their debt load on the telecom side of business so they can reinvest in the company for 5G, as well as not have debt drag on future earnings. Because if you come to the balance sheet for AT&T, look at the total debt of $201 billion. So that's gonna cause some drag on the company if you have that much debt 
in terms of just paying off interest. At some point, you just can't keep on adding more and more debt to the company. They have to lean down a little bit. And lastly, now both businesses can focus on more specific goals and really lean into one objective. So I've worked for big business and I know that when top management has multiple goals, it can get a little confusing when that is trickled down to the peons, right? So for AT&T, if you have this focus on, oh, we're gonna be this amazing streaming content company, and then also we're gonna be the best 5G, what is the company focused on? Once you split the assets, okay, it's like this company focuses on 5G, and this company focuses on content, so it doesn't get intermingled. What I don't like is AT&T's upper management has continued to screw up over the years. I mean, you have the DirecTV acquisition. They pay a ton of money for that company and then write it down later. You have the acquisition of Warrior Media to combine the companies to make something great, and then now they're divesting it, creating a separate company to focus on just content streaming. It's kind of stupid because that's exactly what they had before. They bought Warner Media and decided they wanted to combine content in telecom. They could have just left alone. And then the second thing is we don't know how much the new company will be valued at. So it's hard to understand how many shares we're going to get. So this down move in AT&T, it could be completely offset by the new shares that people will be getting. So what's the game plan for a chart that looks like this? Pretty ugly. Uh, you have this huge crash and for AT&T, this kind of move takes out, uh, you know, months worth of gains in a couple days, which is rough to swallow, uh, but you can only deal with what we currently have. For me, it's more of a hold situation at these levels. When AT&T was trading in the lower 30s, I thought the fair value was still around 36, 37. So with this news coming out, which I think is pretty neutral, meaning they're creating a new company, and if you're a shareholder of AT&T, you'll still get a stake in the new company, I think this down move in the stock itself is more related to the fear over the dividend loss because a ton of investors in this company were in it for the dividend. So when a company like this sells off, it's more of just a hold for me because I don't think much has really changed. In terms of what I'm more excited about, I'm probably more excited about the streaming company to see what it's valued at. And I would rather sell off my telecom stock once I get the new stock and reinvest that into a company like Verizon, which I did a stock review on. And that company, Verizon, is more focused on telecom right now and has the ball rolling on 5G. It feels like AT&T is kind of lagging there. Whereas the more exciting part about AT&T is the HBO, is the streaming, is that growth story. So I really wanna find out more details about what that company is worth and how many shares we'll be getting as an AT&T shareholder. There you have it. There are my thoughts on the AT&T and Discovery deal. Pretty fitting that I'm doing it in a Captain America shirt. Thanks guys for watching. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Main Street Wolf where we do talk about stocks, investing, options, anything to do with money. Thanks guys for watching and have a great day.